the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It is good that we're together, you know, even in this way. Um, but we are one, and Jesus is with us as we uh, pray. This is the second Sunday of Easter, but it's also Divine Mercy Sunday. And so we are really aware of the merciful God that we have. And so that's where we begin. Let's look into our life and let's acknowledge our sins so that we can prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people that you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace that you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, 
praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who, by the power of God, are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may, to, may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. 
even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, 
and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, it's good to be with you. It's good to be together again. You know, one of the things I think we can relate to in this gospel is the feeling of knowing what it's like to be removed, um, to be taken away from others. So staying in the house with locked doors because we're afraid of what's out there maybe or, or what could happen. Sheltering in a place then is a lot like feeling locked in place. And it's the same, I think, if you're eight years old or if you're 88 years old. It's just kind of this feelings of being locked in. But maybe what this sheltering in place has made us more aware of in the, in the last month or so is that the boundaries or barriers are there only if we make them to be that, boundaries and barriers. You know, fear is one of the responses we can have. That's, that's a boundary or a barrier. But hope is another, and that's an opportunity. You know, because people have found, I've talked about this before, that all different ways to break the boundaries and to get out of the house, even though we're staying inside of the house. We have a virtual presence that's allowing us to travel to each other's homes, to work together, to do business, to host parties and game nights, things like that. But also to say hello in creative ways and to um, even do this, to come to Mass. Boundaries and barriers really can't hold down the human spirit and the desire for us to stay together and stay connected to make it uh, work uh, the way that it needs to work. Even if we're very afraid and, and, and uncertain of the future and whether we're gonna make it, those are very real, real feelings. But here's the thing is we don't have to stay sheltered within even though we're sheltered at home. We have something inside of us. We have a strength. We have the ability to reach out and to let people know if we're struggling um, because there are resources out there that we can connect with and that can possibly help us. And so if we need it, uh, we should say something to trust somebody uh, with what we're going through. And if uh, our parish can help you in any way, please uh, let us know. You know, we're here for you. If anyone teaches us that boundaries can be overcome, it, it's Jesus Christ. You know, we see in the gospel today how he's able to transcend the locked doors and the boundaries that the apostles created be out of their own fear. John tells us in breaking in, he simply stood in their midst. And that idea, that thought, that um, piece of scripture has been really staying with me all week, that he just stood in their midst. And what he offered his apostles first was peace. And that's so important because inside of that peace, the peace of knowing that Jesus stands with us, that's how he helps us. Um, that's how he helped the apostles. That's how he will help us, you know, to realize that we have the power within to do something uh, incredibly important, which is to share the peace of Christ with others because once we have it, we're meant to share it. When Jesus stands with us in our life, we have a, this interior strength that allows us to get through really anything that life throws at us. His promise, as we know, isn't necessarily that he's going to take the hard things from us. Otherwise, um, you know, our life experience doesn't uh, reveal that at all. His promise, though, is companionship, and that will never go away. You know, we have the peace of knowing we have a companion by our side who we can lean on and who promises to help us shoulder the burden of what we're going through. And that's why, you know, Peter in that second reading said something really important. Even, even though we can't see him physically, it doesn't mean we don't know he's with us, that he is there. Uh, that's what our faith gives us. And Jesus is the one who knows the heaviness, the heaviness of a cross. But he also knows it leads to re resurrection and that leads to freedom. Because what peace also gives us is uh, the realization that we are forgiven, so we can feel God's divine mercy. 
Um, because Jesus' promise is that uh, he will forgive. You know, another boundary that we can put on ourselves is to believe that we're not worthy to be forgiven of anything. But that's not what Jesus says. We can and are forgiven. It's again acknowledging who's in our midst and going to that person and asking for us. He gave his life for it. So with God in our life, you know, we're never alone. And that's what compels us to reach out and unlock our doors and find ways to connect with each other, even if these days it's in this virtual environment. Jesus said, just as the Father has sent me, so I send you. It's no wonder then at the end of the Mass, you know, we're sent to go in the peace of Christ, the peace of knowing that God is with us, that we can share that peace, that he's standing in our midst, and it gives us security and the strength to live the gospel, which we're meant to live. In that first reading, we heard what it really can look like when we live the gospel together, when we devote ourselves to the teaching of the apostles or the belonging to a community of faith that that allows us to feel the strength of each other, to come together for the breaking of the bread like we're doing right now, and for prayer. Practicing our faith, that's what holds us together. And it draws other people to us too because they see that we have something. We have a firm foundation that we're standing on. We're not going to crumble. In other words, it leads to unity and to peace, the very things we receive when Jesus stands in our midst, the things that we hear even in the context of the Mass, unity and peace. So what's holding St. Hubert together as we find ourselves sheltered in place and in so many different homes, it's our inner strength that we share, the peace that comes from Jesus standing with us. Staying at home and locking doors doesn't have to create the barriers, including the barrier and the lie that we can't be forgiven. Jesus breaks through all of that and is standing with us. And with him and with all of us looking out for one another, we're going to get through because we're doing this together and we have all the things that break these barriers down. We have faith, we have hope, we believe in goodness, and treating people right. We have something firm that we're standing on. We have the strength that comes with Christ's presence. Let's continue to pray for each other and with each other. And now, as a people of faith, let us profess with Catholics all around the world everything we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, with our brothers and sisters here at St. Hubert, let us bring our prayers and needs to God. For the church, as we continue to celebrate Jesus' resurrection from the dead, 
that we renew our commitment to go forth to share the wonder of redemption through him, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all political, social, and spiritual leaders, that during this worldwide pandemic, they will inspire in their people a spirit of sharing and sacrifice for the good of all humanity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders, health care providers, and researchers around the world, that they work as a community to alleviate the suffering of all those afflicted with COVID-19 pandemic, pooling their resources and knowledge so that all are healed and helped, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we find ways to provide support to those suffering from unemployment, lack of insurance, hunger, loneliness, anxiety, and depression in these challenging times, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the women, men, and children awaiting to receive the sacraments of full initiation into the Catholic Church, that in this time of waiting, we join our hearts with theirs in spiritual communion, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from coronavirus and for all those in our parish who are struggling with their own health issues and are in a time of isolation and uncertainty, that they find strength in Jesus Christ for their journey, especially Dorothy Colello, Nancy Paula, John Johnston, Kathy Kennedy, Sharnice Sipton, Sharon Murray, Jerry Council, Rosa Maria Rangel, Saul Danzga, Dan Cutt, Yumi DuPont, John Norcus, Debbie O'Connor, Helen Nagoy, Charlene Perry, Nancy Early, Mary Stump, Peter Yeager, Mary Walsh, Kathy Murtha, Patrick Tan, for those infected with the coronavirus, for those for whom you would like to pray. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. For those who have died, that they experience God's mercy and everlasting love, especially victims of this pandemic, natural disasters, and violence in all its forms. And for John Catalano, Michael Lavorsi, Louis Gurlis, Daniela De Rivera, Jean Farrell, and Daniel Pinson, for those whom you would like to pray. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the following people who those in our community have asked us to pray for, Jim Gillespie, John and Lena Green, Greg Carlstead, Rosa Rangel, Diana Knight, Jen Dennis Jankowski, Helen Blum, and all St. Hubert parishioners. We also pray for the needs of those written in our book of prayer intentions, for the silent prayers we keep in our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We do thank you, God, for always listening to us in times of need. Your mercy is infinite. So please hear us. We ask all of these prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Hubert, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Blaise our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by a divine teaching, as a family of faith, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and now let us all share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Behold, the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And now let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So once again, it's been good to be together and to share this time with one another in prayer. Let's continue to pray for each other. Um, today on Divine Mercy Sunday, we are having the food drive to help our friends at the food pantry at Church of the Holy Spirit. Their numbers have doubled uh, since this time last year uh, with the demand for food. So thank you for dropping by to bring some food in. Uh, that'll be from 10 to 2 o'clock today. And also, if you'd like to stay connected with us and you're not on our flock note um, emails uh, service, there's a link on the website where you can sign up if you'd like to stay in touch with us in that way. So thank you so much for joining us and being together as church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.